Hey guys, Ruben here. Do you find that when you're under pressure, your mind keeps going blank? And no matter how much you prepare and how confident you feel before, you keep losing your memory in the moment. Well, in this video, I want to talk about why that keeps happening to you and how you can have a fully functioning memory when you are under pressure. All right, guys, so I want to get into why why that blanking out problem happens. But like what's happening in the body, what's happening in the mind, that the mind is going blank. And the reason is, it is, it's a very strong fight or flight response. So the body is activated, it is sensing danger, it's sensing a threat in the external environment. And, and so what it's doing is it's blanking out the memory it's blanking out your memory in order for you to survive it's a survival instinct so obviously in today's everyday life the threat or danger is not there you know we're not in survival mode all the time um so it is important that our our minds and our bodies only perceive that when it's appropriate right when it's proportionate to the external environment and the threat that's really out there if if the threat and the danger is really not a part of reality, then it's important for our bodies and our minds to be able to relax back. Now, what do I mean by that survival or, it, or we perceive that threat or that danger? I'll give an example. For me, a huge, a huge, huge issue for me was public speaking. I could not public speak without my voice quivering. Um, I couldn't breathe. I was My mind was like my mind would blank out like crazy. I couldn't even, um, it was really, really embarrassing for me um, whenever I had to public speak. Um, I, it led to a lot of shame cycles after the fact because I, I would make people just so uncomfortable um, by my physiological responses. Now, why did that happen? When I was a kid, I used to get shamed on the soccer field. So every time I used to make a mistake when I was playing soccer, uh, my dad would he would scream at me, um, scream at me for making a mistake, um, shame me in front of the whole crowd, um, yell at me, and um, that. So when I was when I got into my adult years, and I had to public speak in my body and my mind, that was associated with um, when I looked at it, the people I had to speak in front of. I perceived that as. Um, I could get embarrassed. I could get shamed. I had a crazy intense um, fear of failure and fear of judgment. I thought I was just going to get laughed at. And so I developed this really perfectionistic. I, the, I was so perfectionistic and trying to make sure everything was done perfectly to avoid feeling that, right? To avoid feeling that shame, embarrassment, rejection, um, shame, whatever. And so when I got into these public speaking situations, my mind and my body would perceive that threat. And what would it do? It would shut down my memory, shut down my mind. It would um, raise my heartbeat, increase my sweating, uh, shut down my hearing. All part of the fight or flight response. Now, every time your body goes into that survival mode, what happens is your mind and your body become two. Your mind and your body separate. Because your mind's somewhere else and your body's trying to survive, right? Your mind is blank um, or your mind's thinking of the worst things that could happen. What, what's happened up in your mind is you've switched to outcome, right? You're fearing the worst thing is going to happen and your body's reacting in a way to make sure that that worst possible outcome doesn't happen. Now, how do you make your mind and your body one again? And the answer is it is through your breathing. I cannot stress how important this is enough. Like your breathing is absolutely, absolutely crucial um, for you to get out of that fight or flight response and get your memory back. The breathing, so your breathing is, we call it your psychophysical bridge, right? Psycho mind, physical body. How do you make them one again? Your breath. Your breath is the bridge. The bridge to get them working together, integrated and whole again. So I'll give you something here because it's not just breathing. It's not mindfulness. It's not just breathing in and out. That's too soft and it's too passive. We need high performance breath work 
and it really matters the type of breathing that you do. It has to be diaphragmic breathing that goes all the way down to the base of your spine because you'll notice every time your mind goes blank, every time you're under pressure, your breath goes shallow to your chest or your throat and you completely disconnect your mind and your body because of that. Now, to prove this, you could try this for yourself. Put your hand on your pulse, your two fingers on your pulse here. Plug your nose and start breathing in and out through your mouth. Your, when you breathe in and out through your mouth, the breath is going to be shallow. It's going to be in your chest here. All right. So hand on the pulse, start breathing in and out through your mouth and notice how your your heart rate goes up your stress response goes up. Now, once you try that out, this shallow breathing through the mouth to the chest, noticing your heart rate going up. Now, I want you to keep your hand on your pulse now. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, close your mouth, and you're gonna breathe in through your nose. And what that does is it takes the breath all the way down to your diaphragm and down to the base of your spine. And you will notice right away that your heart rate starts to come down, okay? And when your heart rate comes down, what does that mean? That means oxygen is flowing in your body, right? And when oxygen is flowing in your body, your brain is getting oxygenated and therefore your mind won't go blank. So you're probably thinking, great, I can breathe through my nose, keep my mouth closed to the base of my spine, my heart rate goes down. Awesome for baseline anxiety. But what do I do when I have to speak with people? And this is a really crucial skill because you have to notice that as you speak, as you speak, that is your out breath. So when you go to a place like Toastmasters, they teach you not to say ums and ahs. But let's take a look at why that is. If I say a sentence like, breath work is essential, and I go, ah. Uh. So what, what, let's break that down. What happened there? I said breath work is essential. I already let out my breath. And then do I really want to let go on more of my breath and say, uh, the reason you don't want to be doing that is because when you, when you speak, you're letting breath out. But in order for your brain to keep oxygenated and keep that memory sharp and keep that, that active memory going, you need to breathe in. So when I say, um, breath work is important. I'll say breath work is important. I'll keep my breath tight. Breath work is important and I'll breathe in to keep my oxygen flowing, to keep that psychophysical bridge from the mind and the body, keep the brain oxygenated and keep the memory sharp. So if I keep going, uh, the brain, breath work is essential. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, uh. Do you see what I'm doing with my breath? I'm losing, I'm losing that, that connection with my mind and my body. The heart rate's going to keep going up. And as that trigger, as that response keeps going higher and higher, I lose the memory. So it's really important as you speak, that's your out breath. Keep it tight and don't give that breath away. Don't sigh. No ums, no ahs. Speak precisely and breathe in. So you know, you might be thinking it's weird to do, but it is a skill and you can make it extremely subtle uh, the more you practice. So for example, if I was at work and they say, if they put me on the spot, hey, Ruben, what, what's going on with your project right now? We need to update. And I go, uh, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, the vendor. Uh, uh, do you see what I'm doing with my voice? gone mine's gone i'm not even thinking i'm not even there anymore my mind's I'm, i've already ran away like from my body i'm no longer in my body so let's say i'm really conscious of my breathing i know the importance of keeping it fluid keeping my brain oxygenated the whole time and now they say uh ruben what's the scope what's the scoop on your project like we need to update and i say i could just say it very tightly what in, what specifically did you want to know and did you see what I did after? As soon as I finished the sentence, I took a breath in. Why? Because it oxygenates my brain. It keeps my mind actively listening, actively functioning, and it connects my mind and my body together. 
it keeps that bridge going. Okay guys, so I hope that helps. No more shallow breathing to your chest. Uh, it's only going to trigger your fight or flight response even more. Your heart rate's going to go up. Your mind and your body are going to disconnect. Your mind's going to go blank. So deep breathing all the way to your base of your spine and be aware that when you're speaking out or when you're speaking, you're already breathing out. So no more sighing, no more, no ums, ahs. Stop giving your breath away. Okay, so your breath is your power. Keep your breath tight, keep it deep, and keep your mind and your body integrated. Right, so I hope that helps, guys. Keep your brain oxygenated to prevent that problem of losing your memory in the moment. So if you found this video helpful, you can join my private Facebook group. It's linked below the video. It's got a ton of videos, articles, resources. That's going to really help you crush this thing for good. And you'll have access to me. You can ask me questions in there. And I, I would love to have you in there. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. All right, peace guys.